Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for this webinar on aeroelastic simulation of a wind turbine blade using LEHPC. This webinar is organized by the European Energy Oriented Center of Excellence, uh, also known as ECO2. And I am very happy today to have Gerard Guillemet hosting this webinar. So Mr. Guillemet is a postdoctoral researcher at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. He specializes in computational solid mechanics in the wind sector. Mr. Guillemet will be presenting the numerical framework combining the computational fluid dynamics and computational structural dynamics solvers from the ALIA HPC code. His presentation should be around 40 minutes long and could be followed by questions if you have any. Um, in case you're not familiar with the way the GoToWebinar app works, uh, the attendees mic is muted by default, so you will have to use uh, the GoToWebinar uh, attendees section of the app and click on raise hands or ask questions so I can then open your microphone. Um, Jira, thank you very much for giving this presentation and I will give you the floor. You can go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Julian. Um, as, as you said, um, well, I am a postdoc researcher in the case uh, department or at BSC. <clears throat> and well, in this uh, webinar, uh, what we are going to show you is um, some recent advances that we have conducted in the uh, in our code to perform my elastic uh, simulations using LES and um, this is going to be applied in a wind turbine blade. Also in this presentation we are going also to show you some uh, improvements in terms of uh, computational performance that has been conducted thanks to my colleague uh, Adria Quintanas that uh, also is part of, uh, of his work. So let me first start with an introduction of uh, the code that we are doing for our research, which is called ALIA. ALIA is a multi-physics uh, HPC code that has been developed by VSC and uh, basically is a finite element, uses the finite element method. As you can see in the, in the, in the right of the presentation, uh, here we show some uh, applications or some simulations in, in real engineering problems that uh, they go from aerospace, uh, wind energy or even uh, for biomechanics. And our two main challenges that, uh, that, uh, that we try to face uh, uh, in our group is that uh, the coupling, as we are a multi-physics guys, uh, we, we try that uh, coupling strategies cannot be the bottleneck of the, of the simulations and also to bring the, the multi-physics simulations in the, in the exascale. Alia <clears throat> it runs in, in several uh, supercomputing facilities, also includes heterogeneous architectures with GPU accelerators that um, in this webinar we are not going to see any simulations in GPUs but my colleague uh, Herbert uh, in the in our team he also shows uh, some optimizations using GPUs uh, applied to CFD simulations and respect uh, and also Alia is uh, one of the two CFD codes of the Prisma benchmark suite okay here we can see uh, some scalability uh, figures uh, in different uh, European and also American uh, supercomputers. Um, well, the motivation uh, within within the IOCOE uh, from our our main task, basically, we we are in the work package uh, related to wind energy, and in one of the packages was the simulations of wind farms and also the rotor blade of the of the of the wind turbine. So one of the several tasks that we that we were involved is was on related to the structural analysis and also the the fluid structure interaction of a full wind turbine blade. As you know, the wind turbine blades uh, has a complex uh, structure because they have different materials. Uh, they have also a lot of uh, internal parts uh, with uh, several uh, shear webs or uh, stringers inside the, the the structure. And in terms of modeling, is uh, 
to, uh, to, in terms of modeling are quite complex so so usually the the the, the the modeling of these kind of structures, um, particularly to fluid structure interactions, are simplified, or only 2D uh, cross sections are only modeled. So, so also to our knowledge is that is that FSI simulations with the real modeling of the details of of a, of a highly detailed structure is uh, is uh, well is not is not very common in the literature, and also the use of two-way coupling in in this uh, large scale uh, structure so in in this in this webinar and, and also in EOCOE the, we have three main objectives particularly focus on the uh, structural analysis and, and also the fluid structure interaction of these parts the first is the is to develop an elastic framework using LES in order to conduct uh, simulations of fluid structure interaction the second objective is to uh, study and analyze different modeling methodologies in order to be able to have highly detailed uh, uh, models, including all the internal and structural parts, because in the literature it is very difficult to find uh, the details of the internal parts of these, uh, of these structures. No? And the third objective is also is to improve the computational performance of the multiphysics simulation. So, to path also to 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 give the way to towards virtual testing in in exascale computers. So a typical uh, methodology that is followed by industry in order to design of structures is what we we can show here is that this is the typically pyramid of the building block approach, and here this pyramid is is particularly uh well um focus on on virtual testing no so at the bottom level at the bottom level we we could have the we have the material characterization that then the, with these properties are we are able to fit all the numerical simulations and these numerical simulations at this level usually are i would say that are cheap and everyone can do this uh these simulations everyone can use um, sophisticated uh, um, meshes, also the use of 3D elements, fatigue damage analysis, and whatever. But when we scale up to the pyramid, as we we the color here we show is from green to to red, complexity is increasing as well as the computational cost. So at subcomponent level, for instance, that we should have in our case uh, part of the of the wind turbine that could could be the blade then to face um, or to solve these kind of simulations it starts becoming more challenging and more complex and then <clears throat> there are uh, the which uh, we move to we can move to other uh, element technologies or then the use of fatigue and damage models can be more uh, challenging because of the computational cost as well as the multiphysics simulations and then ending with the full structure then here if you if we don't have a methodology or a modeling approach that is optimized for the uh, lower levels um the simulations can be unfeasible um in order to be conducted in in well in in more or less uh, uh times no um so the outline now of this uh, of this webinar basically is to first to show you the uh, the development of this elastic model using the LES framework that is one of the objectives that we have, that we have seen the second the second one is to also to um, evaluate and also to <clears throat> evaluate and also to uh, analyze different algorithmic and computational optimizations for multi for these multiphysics problems and uh, finally we will see uh, an application case that is a wind turbine blade and we will end with the conclusions and future work. So let's uh, first uh, show you the, the, the elastic uh, framework that, uh, that we have uh, developed uh, in, in our code. Basically, um, a fluid structure interaction framework consists of three main ingredients. The first ingredient is to have a model that solves the physics of the fluid, the, the, 
the computational fluid dynamics. In this case, this uh, was, uh, was already developed uh, some time ago, and here we use um, an LES model that uh, tries to conserve the, the energy. It uses simple Galerkin discretization using, the, using finite elements, and uh, it uses an <coughs> a Runge-Kutta treatment of the convective and the, dis and the diffusive terms okay, for, the, for the time integration. With um, with respect to the to the to the um, we use an EMAC term um, not only for the conservation of energy but also for the momentum and angular momentum and also uses the explicit uh, SGS uh, typically Bremen uh, model. In order to have the movement of the mesh, we use an arbitrary Lorentz uh, Eulerian formulation. And that is solved through the Laplacian equation. So this, <clears throat> this would fit the, the, what we call the, the CFP together with the ALE uh, model framework. In terms of the computational solid mechanics, um, we have uh, total Lagrangian formulation, infinite strengths. We solve basically the equation of linear momentum of balance. And for the time integration, we use a typical Neumann beta, beta integration scheme. So this, um, with these two ingredients, then what we need is uh, what we could call a coupling, a coupling model or a coupling library. In our case, in order to conduct these uh, elastic uh, simulations, we use a typical uh, Gauss-Seidel algorithm that is showed, is showed here, but also other approaches could be used, for instance, Jacobi's or, or or whatever. This is uh, basically a, partit a partitioning approach. So we use, we're going to use a multi-code, uh, uh, multi-code instances, and um, this allow us to perform one-way or two-way couplings depending on the on the necessity and the complexity of the problem. And what is very important is the data transfer. The data transfer in these cases is in is on the boundary because we 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 send. We send the displacements, or, or we or we can send the tractions to the to the to the solid domain. And is as we are working in a in a parallel environment, it's very important to to have a good communication and data transfer between the multi-code uh, instances. So let's first start with the first benchmark benchmark test that we that we carry out uh, some time ago. This is a 2D channel with a flexible wall. This, this is a work from, from the PhD thesis of, of Mock. And basically, this, 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 this channel consists of uh, um, this uh, rectangular, yes, almost rectangular channel that we have a, a, a wall or a flexible beam in the, in the middle. And, um, and well, the properties of the solid and the fluid um, are given on the, on, on the right table. We can see that. Uh, in this case, the, the added mass effect is, is important because the, <clears throat> because the density of both um, domains are, are, are similar. And um, in this case, what we are going to use is uh, the Gauss-Seidel algorithm, algorithm with the staggered uh, implicit-implicit coupling uh, approach. Okay? Here we can see the, the results of this, of this test at the top. We have the, the tip displacement, the velocity, and also the pressure versus uh, the time. These curves are obtained with, uh, um, well, for the point A and point B. Point A is located at the top of the wall, and point B is located at the middle of the wall. And as we can see, we have a good agreement with the uh, results from, from MOC. So, here we can see this video as the how the flexible wall uh, deforms, and well, this was a starting point for the validation of the of the all the fluid structure interaction framework. In order to see the the behavior of the LES framework, we decided to to use the same the same benchmark test, despite that is not um, is not for LES. Um, in this case, we decided just to tune the, the properties of the fluid and use the properties of the air. Okay, so 
this is just to uh, see if if the framework uh, was working well also just just to mention that well the les only makes only makes sense in 3d cases but well in this case as i said was only to see if uh, everything was working well and here the 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 inflow is a six meter seconds of uh, um of a speed and here we can see how the vortices are created on the back of the of the flexible wall and how the how the the wall was uh, was deflecting no was was def uh, um, now let's move to the to the case study that we proposed within the Iokoi project. As um, in this case, we decided to to use or to simulate the 30 meters wind turbine blade. This wind turbine blade was conducted in a in an old project that <clears throat> from NRL. And this this is a, a blade from a one and a half a megawatt horizontal wind turbine. Okay, it is a 33 meters long blade, um, so it's a 70 <coughs> uh, rotor um, diameter. And as we can see, um, we have uh, well, we have 24 air folds. And well, we first of all we 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 built um, this uh, this CAD model. And we were really interested on this, on concretely on this, on this case because it has a lot of information regarding on the materials, also the internal parts. Everything is is very well detailed, and 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 well, was it has been the, the our case study within the, the within the project. <clears throat> In terms of modelization uh, for the materials and the mesh. Here um, we we decided to do a very detailed uh, mesh of this uh, of this uh, win, uh, of this wind turbine blade. We first started with the, only with the blade tip, as you can see in this in this figure on the top. We can see the different materials and also details of the mesh discretization. The mesh discretization for the solid domain is fully in in exa with hexahedrons and also um, some wedges. And um, well, we have to say that, as we will see in the in the next slide, that we were very ambitious because uh, on that because well, it we have we had a lot of problems. I mean, it's it's um, as you probably know, it's not easy to 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 mesh uh, a geometry like this. But we successfully uh, could mesh it. We use it mesh. Uh, we use it the answer mesh uh, preprocessor. And uh, and well, we have learned a lot from this uh, from this model. Then from the blade tip, then we move to the full blade. In the full blade, we, you can see here um, that uh, that well. Then um, um, well, here the, the the blade is 30 meters. So as we were able to mesh the blade tip, then it was easy to do the the, the full blade. With regards to the wind tunnel. Um, well, we we are going to study um, two different setups. The first setup is with for the blade tip, and it's a wind tunnel of uh, 30 meters uh, long. And, and setup number two is uh, with the full blade. In this case, the wind tunnel is larger. It uh, it has a length of uh, half, almost half of kilometer. And a height of uh, um, 50, almost 50 uh, meters. Um, another, <clears throat> as I said uh, in the beginning of the of the webinar, another another objective uh, within the Yokoe was to try to optimize the computational performance. Okay, in this in this slide we we show the the different uh, levels of parallelism that uh, that we can work. And also the benefits that can bring us to perform these uh, large scale uh, simulations and also these uh, these multi-physics simulations. We are para we are mainly focused on the on on activities on fine grain activities um, that are these ones that are in the red rectangle. That the first one is the vectorization or or, or also uh, called the single instruction instruction multiple data. And also, um, we uh, we studied, or yes, we we test, yeah, we studied, or we evaluated the 
the dynamic load balancing that this is really uh, important for uh, multi-physics uh, simulations. Um, let's first start with uh, the, the, the vectorization. In, in our case, the, the CFD model was already vectorized, the main assembly uh, loop, and the solid mechanics model was uh, totally remanufactured and optimized, and optimized, and optimized for, uh, for vectorization. In this, in this case, we are going to see the difference of, uh, on, in terms of execution time between the, 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 the non-vectorized version and also the vectorized version in a case study that is the case study of in a case study of fluid structure interaction that is in this case is just the the blade tip this is a this case study is a two way coupling we are going we perform only 1000 time steps in order to evaluate this execution well this uh, computational cost per um, of the model and uh, we are using um, different numbers of cores for each uh, code instance for the solid and for the fluid. So let's take a look into the into the figures. The first figure uh, shows the, um, the the time uh, with of the element assembly and the boundary assembly. And we can see here that we have uh, we can achieve a uh, speed up of one uh, one and a half times respect to the MPI or uh, case without the vectorization. And then if we take a look into the into, into the other graph that uh, that here we also included the the solver time okay so as you can see well we we have uh, again we have an improvement in in the assembly but the what what dominates what dominates the computation the, the cost of the simulation is the solver that here more or less I, I guess that is almost 90 percent of the time is uh, dedicated to to uh, solve the the system of equations. No, so this um, thanks to the to the opportunity to work in this in this project, we had the the, the opportunity to work also with uh, MAMS consortium, and uh, we we integrated the we integrated the the MAMS uh, solver into the into the ALIA in order to. Uh, conduct uh, fluid structure interaction analysis. Um, we saw we saw that the the MAMS as a direct solver um, was not really competitive um, versus the iterative solvers. In particular, when when the problem becomes very large. Despite of that, we also decided to um, use this MAMS uh, this this MAMS solver in the ALIA deflated uh, RAS preconditioner. So these are, <clears throat> now here we are going to, uh, to, 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 dis to discuss the results that we obtained for this, for this case. Here we used the same, the same case study that we, we have seen in the previous slide, that is the, the blade tip with the two-way coupling. And uh, let's start with the first, um, with the first uh, um, graph. That uh, that is the uh, is a performance analysis only on the solid domain because the solid domain is the one that is solved um, uh, in with the implicit solver, and here uh, we show the total uh, solver times um, using the GIMRES iterative solver plus uh, the preconditioning. Okay, and here we compare three different situations of the of the RAS. Okay. The in blue, in blue are the, the RAS, the RAS preconditioner that we have uh, implemented in our code. And then um, in green, we show the use of the uh, MAMS uh, direct solver in the, in the RAS. And we can see that, the, um, that we can have an improvement, an improvement using the MAMS direct solver instead of our uh, own um, direct solver in the in the solver um, on the graph below on the graph below um, is is detail is more detail uh, the CPU's times the average CPU's times on this uh, RAS preconditioning in here we show the 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 time for the analysis the time for factorization and the time for the solution and as you can see here that 
the factorization, if the problem is very dominated by the, by the factorization, we can have a very good improvement if you use the mount instead of our uh, factorization in, in our code. So this is very dependent on the problem and for sure that we need to, uh, well, um, more cases has to be analyzed and also it depends on the physics and there are a lot of uh, stuff that depends on that. But well, are uh, some improvements that we saw uh, together with, uh, with, uh, with the MAMS consortium. Um, now let's move to another, um, another um, tool that is called the dynamic load balancing um, applied in the fluid structure interactions. What is uh, DLB or dynamic load balancing? Dynamic load balancing basically is a runtime library that enables uh, dynamic load balancing of the, of the process. It is a library that has been developed at BSC and it enables to use uh, resources from other MP tasks whenever are available. Okay, so, so basically another advantage is, is that, um, that this works externally, so you don't have to, you don't have to uh, introduce any modifications in the original code. Okay, let's see, let's see uh, uh, an example on how it works. Here we can see um, two um, MPI applications. Okay, at the top, at the top it is uh, an unbalanced MPI application, and at the bottom we have this unbalanced, unbalanced MPI application, uh, balance it with DLB. Okay, as you can see uh, in the red, that is the, it would be the trace of our execution of processes. That um, for the case of the DLB, the MPI tool, um, it is is able to lend resources to other um, to other processes. So this allows to manage the um, to manage the uh, balance uh, dynamically and in runtime our our simulation. Let's see an example. I mean, in in the cases of of, of multi physics, uh, for instance, the case that we are facing that is a typical fluid structure interaction, we usually have a typical trace like the one that we can see here. It's not the trace of our problem, but is is uh, it serves as a as an idea and also to see the the how it works. Um, at the, this trace, for those people who don't not how to interpret this. In the vertical axis, we have the two uh, domains, the flow, the flow processes, and also the solid uh, processes. And the horizontal line is the time. The execution is the, is the, is the, is the time, is, um, is the time axis. <clears throat> As we can see in a Gauss-Seidel, in a gauss -Seidel coupling, first the, the flow process starts. Then, um, the, 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 the fluid model sends the, um, the variables, the variables, for instance, in this case, the, the pressure to the solid model, and then it waits. So then when, while the solid is, is solving, the fluid or the flow are waiting, that the waiting, the waiting are in, in color blue. So, and then once the, sol, uh, once the solid has finished, then the, it starts uh, the fluid solver again. And this is repeated in time. This is the Gauss-Seidel or, or also the ping-pong uh, uh, coupling algorithm. So now let's see um, the benefits of using, for instance, this uh, DLB in this case. We are using the same case, the blade tip. Here we can see, okay. And in this graph, we are showing the um, the average of our roll time per time step. The blue, the blue bar. Uh, shows the uh, fluid, this fluid structure interaction case without DLB, and here we are using 768 uh, uh, cores. That these 1700 cores are split with 288 cores for the fluid and 480 cores for the solid. And we can see that we have an average of four seconds per time step. When using when using the DLB that are the green either sorry the gray uh, the gray bars, in these cases we are overloading the nodes. So instead of using 700 uh, cores, we are using for 480 and 528 cores. 
With that, we can see that the <clears throat> that the, the the overall time is almost the same as using uh, 768 cores uh, without no DLB. So this shows how the DLB manage in runtime the, the the resources and is able to unbal and is able to balance to balance uh, the process and the resolution of this uh, multi-physics uh, coupling, uh, coupling problem. Now let's move to the, to the case studies for the, for the wind, wind turbine blade. Also in, in this project, we, we, we also we dedicated part to solve the physics of the, no, was not just uh, <coughs> optimizations for the, comp uh, for the computational perf performance, so we we only so, so we also decided to study different um, situations of the blade tip, and in this case we studied <clears throat> two different operation well basically two um, two different operational conditions. One is with different velocities. The first operational condition is 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 called a, and is when the blade has a pitch angle of minus 2.6 uh, degrees that is the figure on the top. And another situation that is a common situation of the, of the blade. And uh, the bottom, we have the, um, the, the, the blade in a more uh, horizontal uh, situation with a pitch angle of almost 90 degrees. For each of these cases, we are going to study different velocities of the, of the wind speed. Um, ranging from 8 meters second, that is a common uh, wind speed, up to 24 uh, meters second, that is more in, in, extreme, <clears throat> in extreme conditions. Here we can see the, the blade with, uh, with the, the results with the, of the blade with a pitch angle of uh, minus 2.6 uh, degrees. On the left, we have the velocities uh, contour plot of, uh, for the different um, for different wind speeds, okay, from 8 to 24, and as we, and here we can see how the vortices are created and the turbulence is created uh, behind the behind the blade, the blade. And on the right, we have the uh, maximum. Well, we have the the maximum uh, deflection of the of the blade, as we can see here. Um, for the wind speed of 8 met meters second, we have uh, a deflection of uh, 11 centimeters. But when, we, when, the wind, when the wind speed increases up to 24, we can reach a deflection of, uh, one, uh, of almost one meter uh, at the blade tip. Now let's move to the, to the <coughs> cases with a pitch angle of almost uh, 90 degrees. In this case, um, the, result, the, the trend or the behavior of the blade is similar. For the low velocities of the wind, um, the blade um, deforms, uh, for, deforms um, two centimeters, and the maximum deflection for, for the two, uh, for, uh, 24 meter uh, second speed is, uh, is almost um, 20, 20 centimeters. <clears throat> I have to say that, um, well, these simulations, uh, we have conducted these simulations with only one-way coupling. We are also trying to do it with, uh, with a two-way two coupling in order to see um, the differences in the physics of, the, of, uh, of this problem. Um, <clears throat> here in this slide, basically, we show the, 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 the deflection of, this, uh, of, the, of the tip of the blade. And, and we can see that in, on the vertical axis, we, we show the deflection, and on the horizontal axis is the, the time. We can see that the, the, this transient problem, um, basically the, the, it, it, um, it evolves uh, as an oscillating, oscillating behavior. And here, um, just, to mention that the, just to mention that the case of the 24 meters per second um, for the blade pitch of minus 2.6, uh, was not still finished, so that's the reason why we only have uh, the first uh, the first uh, part of the of the curve. Okay. Um, well, 
um, just also some some videos on how the how the how this blade is behaving be behaving. On the top, we have the free in both cases is a free air stream of 16 meters per second. And on the on the top we have the pitch angle of uh, minus 2.6, and at the bottom the uh, pitch angle of uh, almost uh, 90 degrees. So that's uh, that's all the all the webinar. Now let's uh, let's let's conclude uh, part of the of this work that we have conducted in this in this project. Basically, the first uh, the first bullet point is that. We have seen well. We have developed uh, an elastic uh, a framework to uh, to conduct uh, LES simulations for fluid structure interaction. Also, still um, we have uh, a lot of work uh, to do and to improve the the robustness and also the the, um, the validation and the validation of this framework with uh, real <coughs> real with 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 experiments and results from the literature. Also, we, um, the use of the MAMS direct um, the MAMS direct solver was integrated in the ALIA framework uh, satisfactory. Also, we have been using the MAMS in the deflated thrust preconditions, and we have seen that can provide significant advantages if the factory if the factory uh, factorization dominates or governs uh, the solution. The use of um, dynamic load balancing also has been demonstrated um, that can have very beneficial you know, to manage the computational resources. We have seen that with less resources, we are able to have um, computational times um, equal to uh, using more uh, resources but without balancing the, without balancing, uh, the problem. Um, this agnostic framework, um, as I said previously, well, we had, we used, we, we follow the building block approach, so, but better validation with more cases and results is required. And, well, the use of 3D elements, <clears throat> we have seen that can be a competing, competent technology at subcomponent level because with the, three, uh, the, with the 3D stress state of the element and also here can, can give, well, can, you can apply here damage models and other and, and a lot of stuff, but but for if you want to um, use um, if you want to yeah model a full wind turbine, other approaches uh, such as shells or wind would definitely uh, simplify the mesh and also um, will decrease the computational cost to perform these uh, large scale uh, simulations. So. Our next steps and, and future work is is well first to to well one another thing that we have in, in on the table is the use of subcycling steps that this is also another common <clears throat> practice that may save overall CPU times and also input output transfers and communications of the multiphysics problem and as I said the use of com um, if you want to do a, sim a larger simulations, for instance, the one that uh, we have seen here that is performed by my colleague uh, in the EOCOE, and that is only a CFD simulation with a sliding mesh. If you want to that to, to bring the elastic uh, framework in that problem, well, um, the use of other element technologies that makes uh, um, <clears throat> That makes um, easy to mesh the, the the full structure would be used uh, instead of uh, 3D elements. So this is something that we have learned, and uh, and that's all. Thank you very much for your attention, and I will be glad if you have uh, to answer any questions or any doubts that you have on the on this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it was very interesting and you covered a lot of things that's been done within ECO. I was going to ask you what the next steps were, but you pretty much addressed it in your last slide. So uh, I'm going to open the Q&A session and as we mentioned at the beginning, if you want to answer the question, please use the GoToWebinar attendee section of the app and click on ask question or raise hand and I will open your mic.
Okay, I'm not seeing any question which, okay, we were a small number of attendees anyway, that's not unexpected. Um, okay, if, if there are no questions, when all that's left to me is to thank you again, Gerard, uh, okay. to let everyone know that uh, this webinar, as our all eco webinars, is being recorded, so I will upload it on the eco YouTube channel afterwards where it could be made freely available to everyone who want to watch it or rewatch it. Um, so thank you all uh, for joining us today for this session. Gerard, thanks again for this presentation. And uh, we will keep you posted of future eco webinars coming in 2022 until the project's end. OK, thank, thank you, you all again. Have a great day, everyone. You do. Bye. Goodbye.